Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Nova and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a thumbnail. It's going to look something like this in the end. And I think this is a very simple and easy thumbnail to make and it doesn't really even take that long. So I'm going to be teaching you how to make this. What you're going to be needing for this is uh, Photoshop. Chill the fuck out phone. I'm sorry about that. You're going to be needing Photoshop, Cinema 4D, and optional is Magic Bullet Looks. It just makes your image look a lot better. So what you're going to do is you're going to open Cinema 4D. Why is it taking so long to open Cinema 4D? There we go. So once you've got Cinema 4D open, you can download a Lightroom. Um, I'm going to put one in the description. This is not my Lightroom. You're going to go to MoGraph and add a Mo text. Now for the text, you're going to put anything you want. So in my case, if I'm making a video called tutorial, so I'm just going to put tutorial. Now you're going to select the text and click align and click middle somewhere in the center. So make sure it fits the whole thing. If that makes sense. Uh, go to depth and make the depth or like the width of the text, something to where you can kind of see it, that it's like 3d and shit like that and click font and just pick any font that you want. Uh, obviously, I'm going to tell you which font I pick, but picking the font is very important. You don't you want to pick like a simple font. You can't just you can't pick a font like, for example, this because it will not look good. OK, uh, so I really suggest like a font that's kind of kind of a little bold, but not this bold. So I might actually go with this. It, it kind of looks like a varsity font. So once you've got your text and your font and your width, you're going to go to caps and add a fill a cap. So click here and click fill a cap and do the same for the end. Uh, now this looks really bad. So change the radius to around like one centimeter. And also don't forget to do it for the back. Now our text is looking a lot better now, but it's still not perfect. So one, one more thing I like to do is select mo text, go to mo graph, effector and target. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, so click target and over here under effector in the strength. Do you want to change the strength to like somewhere where it's not painful to look at it, you know? Some somewhere where it's just like barely barely like twisted, but it's not boring to look at. And one thing that I noticed is our width is really like the width of the text is crazy big. So I'm just going to go back to mode text, go to object and change the depth to something like this, even less like this. Now that allows us to even distort it even more with the target effector and it still looks good. Uh, one more thing you can do is go to mode text and click this right here, the rotate tool and maybe just point it up a little bit so you can see the bottom of the text. I wouldn't really twist it to the side much because then it's not like centered, maybe like two degrees or not much. And definitely don't twist it this way because that just that doesn't look that good. So once you have that, you're going to go to settings and go to save. Now you're going to click these three dots and just name your whatever you want it to be called. I just usually name it after what it actually says. So tutorial save. And make sure this is on PNG. So click PNG and alpha channel has to be ticked as well. Uh, other than that, you don't really need to mess with this. Um, one more thing I really suggest is going to output and making sure this is full HD. So it actually looks nice in the thumbnail. But now you can close this and you can just click this middle one over here that renders the image. And you're going to wait until that is done. Okay, Nova, stop. It is done. So next step that you want to do is actually before we move on to Photoshop, you can close this. You might want to save this. And actually, I might uh, give you guys this actual file. So all you have to do is change the text. So I'm just going to save this Lightroom. So next time I want to make a thumbnail, it's all going to look the same and it's going to be super easy to change. I can just change the text and there it is. But anyway, uh, once you've saved this, that'll make your life a lot easier. So just a heads up. Now you're going to open Photoshop. So now that you've opened Photoshop, what you want to do is go to file new 
And this really depends on you, but usually I don't do Full HD for thumbnails because then in the end, the file can be a very big file and you're gonna have problems uploading it to your video because sometimes the image size will be bigger than what YouTube allows. And really HD is good enough because you're gonna be seeing it from a distance. So for the background, what I like to do is usually I would take something off the video. So let's say, do I have any, um, obviously do your thumbnails after you have the video ready. And once, once you're like doing the thumbnail, what I like to do is say if it was a thumbnail on this video, whoops, that is really loud. Uh, you would just like pick a still frame, maybe like something like this. That's fine. And move your cursor out of the way and just click print screen on your keyboard, click print screen. And once you've clicked that, just go to edit and paste. So now you have your image for the background over here in Photoshop and move it to where it looks good. So I would say that is actually really good. Uh, so now that you have this, you have a background, but the background, like it doesn't look good at all yet because it's just a background. So you're going to click this, uh, or not, you're not going to click it because steam, fuck you steam. Okay. Now you're going to click this, uh, button next to the folder button, I guess. And you're going to add a hue and saturation. So saturation usually for these types of thumbnails I like to make it black and white because honestly it just looks the best and lightness make it something to where it's like dark like maybe like that so the background isn't you can still see the contents of the background but it's not as vibrant and it's less eye popping and that's exactly what we want it to be like so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and maybe you can even spin the background that's actually a really good thing to do. It kind of catches the eye when it's like tilted or whatever. Uh, so one more thing we can do to our background, to the actual image, is we can duplicate it. So right click, duplicate layer, and you could go to filter, blur, and box blur. So you want to... Uh, somewhere where you can still see what it is you're gonna be able to see what it is much better from a distance because like when you look at it like that and it's all blurred and dark it's gonna be hard to tell what it is but trust me it's fine and the reason why I said duplicate a layer for this blur is you can actually erase parts of it so like if you want this gun to stand out like over here if you want it to stand out you would just erase the gun and now everything else but the gun is blurred and it's really fast to kind of get the gun out, you know. I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but there you go. So you can see, you can really see the difference. It's like depth of field. Once you have that, uh, since the gun is not blurred at all, I want it to be a little bit blurred. So I'm just going to click the first one, hold shift and click the second one, right click and merge layers. Now I'm going to duplicate this one more time. Actually, we don't have to duplicate it. Just go to filter, blur and box blur and just a little bit three is fine there we go so now we have a clean looking background and we can move on to the text uh you're gonna click this and that's just so it doesn't put it below that layer and now find your text that you just rendered from your from cinema 4d and just put it in here now i just came to the realization that this text doesn't look the best you could have done a lot better I mean, I could have done a lot better, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm hurrying up a little bit. So now you can already see this is starting to look, um, it's clean, but it's starting to look good. So uh, you're going to double click this and we're going to do some adjustments to the text. So one thing I like to do is go to inner glow and make sure this blending mode is on overlay. And I'm sorry if I'm speaking kind of fast, I, I want to make it a short video. And you can maybe even slow down the video or pause it to, you know, understand me a little bit more. So another thing you could do is you can add a gradient overlay, but I don't really like to do that unless my text looks like washed up, washed up, washed out colors or like 
even without the gradient overlay you can tell there's a lot of contrast a lot going on in the text so i'm going to add it just for the sake of the tutorial but i'm going to lower the opacity and make sure the blending mode is on overlay because otherwise it's going to look something like this so um i would say that's pretty much it for for the text oh no one more thing uh, go back, double-click this, and we're going to add an outer glow. So it kind of separates the background from the text. So click outer glow, go to blending mode, normal, and opacity to full, or 100%. Now go to color and change it to black. I'm kind of speeding a little bit, but you guys get the idea. And uh, you want to change the size to a little bit bigger. Maybe like 50 is good. Yeah, I would say I would say that's fine. So now that you've played with your text a little bit, what you can do is you can right click and duplicate it. And we're just going to clear layer style over here. Or we, we don't have to clear layer style. We can just double click this and turn off outer glow. So you might think this is pointless, but you will see what's going on in just a second. Uh, so right click this layer that we turned off outer glow, outer glow for and click rasterize layer style. Okay, so hold control T and click this top corner and don't move it yet. Just click and hold it and hold shift and alt. I'm sorry if that's a little bit too complicated, but hopefully you guys get the idea. And just put it somewhere like there, that's fine. And go to filter, blur and box blur. And I would say something around six, maybe six is even too much. I would say five. And now what you're going to do is you're going to erase some parts of this blurred version of the text. So just erase some parts so it's not that visible. I'm definitely going to take out this T and this L because those are just way too far from the text and it doesn't really look good. So just on the edges over here, you're just going to make it like kind of clean and make it look really good. There we go. So we are uh, almost done with the thumbnail itself. You're just going to go to click the most top layer of your composition or your project or whatever. And you're going to make a new layer. So once you have that new layer, you're going to go to brush tool, right click and make sure hardness is on 0%. And the size for this has to be like, like kind of big. So depending on if your composition is HD or full HD, uh, if you're doing HD, I would say something around 1,100 pixels. And make sure the color is white. And we're going to add a light. So we're just going to put a brush to somewhere over here, maybe even lower like this. Okay, we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And you do this by holding out and right click and holding that too and just dragging across. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, like 1000 pixels. And maybe somewhere around here. How does that look? Okay, that's fine. I like it. Okay, so we're almost done. I know I've been saying this a lot, but go make a new layer above the background and make sure the color of your brush is black and now you're just going to create some black spots just kind of like a vignette so it's a lot more smoother over here over here over here maybe erase it a little bit here okay so i actually kind of like that just erase it a little bit here all right we're good so now your text I mean, your thumbnail looks fine. So now your thumbnail is like pretty much done, but I'm going to teach you the optional, like optional part that I always do in my tutorials. And if you don't have this program, I'm just going to do one more step before we go and do that because this makes your thumbnail or whatever look a lot better. So click the bottom of Slayer in your project, hold shift, left shift, and click the top of Slayer. So right click. And I like to duplicate this before we merge it just so you can, you know, look back. And if you want to change something, you can change anything here. And now you're going to right click and merge layers. So now you're going to duplicate this new layer. Click OK. 
and go to filter other and high pass so you want to make it maybe like 2.5 2.5 looks good click ok and change the blending mode to overlay so now you can see that kind of like made the edges a lot more sharper but it made it look a lot better in general so you always want to do this not always but usually this step i repeat on every banner every thumbnail that i make so that's just a general heads up for like you designers so i usually repeat the step like every time i create something like a banner or a thumbnail because it makes it look really good and it just kind of makes the edges look more sharp go to file save as and i'm just gonna pick i'm just gonna make a folder real quick called tutorial name it whatever you want it doesn't matter obviously and go to save as type and save it as a tiff now when you click save a window pops up uh, one thing you will always want to do is click this because if you don't click this your file is going to be very big and you will not have space on your computer after a couple of designs so when you're in magic bullet looks go to file open image file and now you're going to find your saved image or whatever so I'm just gonna open it okay so now I'm gonna pick a look that I have from like for my looks and once I find a good one I'm gonna tell you guys the settings also if you guys want all these looks that you see over here and a lot more you can go to my selfie down below and you can find there's like 40 looks over there for like a dollar so I think it's totally worth it to buy the looks and each one of them is completely made by hand i made them and see what looks good in different scenarios but i think i'm gonna go with this one right here i'm just gonna change the diffusion because it's way too much uh so i'm gonna give you guys all the settings and how you do this i've already explained it in my other tutorials you just go to tools and you drag each one of these on here so first one we have is color vista three-way and these are the settings you can pause it pause the video and copy the settings so next one is diffusion pop and chromatic abbreviation or variation or whatever so now that you've done that you go to file and export no not not export i always make the same mistake go to file and save image as click save I feel like a retard in this tutorial. I'm just telling you guys all the simplest things like save, close, open. Hopefully I'm not being too like, whatever. So just put your file into Photoshop and right click and rasterize it. So I think you're pretty much done. I mean, you can also uh, right click and duplicate this and you can add another high pass filter. So I'm gonna do that. Make it like one, click okay, and change it to linear light. So there you go. That's how you make a thumbnail. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this thumbnail style is, I would say very creative and very unique because most people do like those phase style thumbnails and it's just a very unprofessional i would say so uh if you guys want to buy graphics visit my store down below i design really cheap it's definitely worth it i would say so thank you for watching leave a like down below comment express your feelings and i'll see you guys later peace out